Hi, I'm Mike Russos from the .NET Customer Success Team, and today I'm going to be answering some commonly asked questions about .NET Standard. So first of all, a lot of people won't know what the difference is between .NET Standard and .NET Core, because these two profiles have sort of grown up around the same time, and it can be confusing understanding uh, the difference between them. So the, the difference is that .NET Core is a runtime platform. It is a .NET product that will execute managed code, uh, just like uh, the full .NET framework or UWP or .NET native. It uh, powers ASP.NET Core, and it uh, you know it has a JIT and a GC and uh, an execution engine. So it it runs managed code. It is a .NET platform. A .NET standard that profile is a set of APIs that are common to all modern .NET platforms. It is a target that you can use for libraries that need to be shared across lots of different platforms. .NET standard itself is not a, a, a runtime. It does not execute code. You, you cannot execute uh, a binary compiled targeting .NET standard uh, APIs. You have to, uh, if you're going to be executing your code, you have to target .NET Core or .NET Framework, or UWP. But if you're creating a library that you want to be shared across all of those platforms, you can target .NET Standard, and it will be usable in all of those places. It's uh, similar to portable class libraries in that way. Um, one question which I think isn't in this deck is what's the difference between a PCL and .NET Standard? The main differences are in um, sort of philosophical. PCLs were created as the intersection between different .NET platforms, whereas .NET Standard is a curated, curated set of APIs which we believe should be present in all modern .NET platforms. So the, the surface areas are arrived at in different ways. Uh, one side effect of this is that different PCLs weren't necessarily linearly compatible. So going from one PCL to a different PCL, you might gain some APIs, you might lose other APIs. Whereas with .NET Standard, we're, uh, we have different versions of the .NET Standard, and each version is a superset of the version that came before it. Um, in practice, they end up being very similar, though. Next question. Can .NET Standard libraries depend on .NET Framework libraries? Mm. In .NET Standard 2.0, yes, this will be possible. Though you will have to be cautious because there will still be some .NET Framework APIs, especially platform-specific things, which won't be available on all .NET Standard platforms. So we allow this to work because there's a lot of legacy .NET Framework um, libraries out there, and more importantly, there's a lot of legacy PCLs out there, which will work everywhere that .NET Standard does. But um, exercise some caution. Before .NET Standard 2.0, no, this doesn't work because the .NET Standard surface area is much smaller than the .NET Frameworks, so that's not going to be viable. We do have a compatibility package, which is meant to be used with PCLs that are MS Core Lib based. You can sort of um, jury rig it to get .NET Standard libraries to build referencing .NET Framework libraries if they include this uh, Microsoft Net Core portable compatibility package. But there are a lot of API differences, and a user is likely to run into problems at runtime if they take this approach, so it's not recommended. Um, a better practice if you're on a pre-2.0 .NET standard is to make sure that all of the uh, code that you own is ported from the bottom up. So the lower level libraries are ported first, and then the, the ones that depend on them come next, not the other way around. Can .NET Framework libraries depend on .NET Standard libraries? Yes, that is the promise of .NET Standards that can be used from Xamarin, .NET Framework, UWP, .NET Core, and it will work. So we have this table here which shows the different versions of the .NET Standard along the top, and which versions of our different runtime profiles can use that version of the .NET Standard. So if you have a library which is targeting .NET Standard 1.3, for example, you could use that from a .NET Framework 4.6 library or app. You could use it from uh, Xamarin or iOS uh, on 10.0 and 7.0 uh, 
uh, iOS and Android uh, respectively. You could not use it with a Windows 8 or a Windows Phone 8 application <coughs> because the .NET Standard 1.3 contains APIs that those platforms don't support. Now, there have been some recent changes which may be confusing to people who um, were following .NET Standard news a few months ago and then haven't kept up to date, and that's with this .NET Framework row concerning support for .NET Standard 1.5.1.6 and 2.0. Today, with current tooling available, .NET Standard 1.5 um, requires .NET stand or requires the .NET Framework 4.6.2 if you want to consume those libraries because there were some APIs added which aren't available in 4.6.1. Similarly, .NET Standard 1.6 today cannot be consumed from any released .NET Framework versions because there are uh, new APIs there that aren't available. We've taken a design decision with .NET Standard 2.0 though to allow .NET Framework 4.6.1 and 4.6.2 to depend on .NET Standard dependencies which use .NET Standard 1.4, 1.5, 1.6, or 2.0. So once we release the 2.0 tooling in Q3 of this year, you'll be able to depend on .NET Standard libraries of any version with .NET Framework 4.6.1 or above. The reason for this is that .NET Framework 4.6.1 is the most popular .NET Framework version. There's a lot of developers using it. There's a lot of libraries available for it. And it almost, almost supports .NET Standard 2.0. There's less than 100 APIs out of tens of thousands which are not present in .NET Framework 4.6.1, which keep it from completely supporting the .NET Standard 2.0. But the benefit of being able to use all of the 2.0, 1.6, and 1.5 .NET Standard libraries, which are available today or coming soon, seems large enough that we want .NET Framework 4.6.1 developers to be able to take advantage of those. And just be aware that there is a small subset of APIs that will throw at runtime. We don't expect these to be commonly used APIs, and the .NET team is currently exploring options for how we can help at development time highlighting those APIs so that you don't accidentally call them. But once the 2.0 tooling's released, we're going to enable .NET, 4, 6, 1, .NET Framework 4.6.1 to use any of these .NET standard versions uh, just to make devs' lives easier. Okay, next question. Should I target .NET standard? If so, which version should I target? Going back to one of our earlier questions, the first thing you need to ask is, am I developing a library or an application, an executable? If you're developing uh, an app or an exe, then the answer is no, you don't use .NET Standard because .NET Standard is a portable, shareable profile which is not itself an execution environment. If you're writing a library, then yes, targeting .NET Standard is an excellent idea because it's going to allow your library to be used by a lot of different platforms. Uh, which version you should use. Uh, you, at its most basic, you choose the version which has enough APIs for you, but not any higher. Because if we go back to this previous chart, you see that as you use higher versions of the .NET standard, there are less runtime fr frameworks that uh, can use that library. But the trade-off is, as you get a higher .NET standard version, you get more APIs available to you. There was a sizable jump between uh, 1.2 and 1.3, modest increases from 1.3 to 1.4, 1.5, and 1.6, and there's an enormous jump in API surface coming in .NET Standard 2.0. So you look at the .NET Standard uh, surface areas, and you choose the lowest one that works for, for your particular library is really what it comes down to. Um, if you're porting an existing .NET Framework library, you may want to wait for 2.0 just because you're going to get a lot of new APIs that are going to make that easier. But uh, for new development, uh, I've worked with a lot of customers who have been very successful using .NET Standard 1.3, 1.4, and these are supported on a lot of different runtime platforms and um, you know have enough APIs that you can be successful if you code against them from scratch. Next question, what APIs are included? Uh, the best way to know what APIs are included is to just go look at the source. Um, .NET Standard libraries are defined in the .NET Standard meta package, which I have linked from the, the slides, which I will make available. Um, in fact, I'll just click this link so, so folks can just see right in the video where, where it is. Um, but uh, in that meta package, you will see 
all of the um, so here's the link for um, all of the libraries that are available in .NET Standard. Okay, then for each of those um, libraries, if you go out to the CoreFX GitHub repo, you will find uh, in that repository we have reference source for each of those libraries, which which is the spec for which which APIs are supported. So as an example, here is the system.runtime, well, if it loads here, here's the system.runtime uh, source, which is the spec. So you can go check that, in, that out in the GitHub repository. Um, so just in .NET slash CoreFX in, in GitHub, you can, you can see what APIs are there. If you're looking for specific APIs, an easy way to do this is to use the APIs of .NET tool, which uh, one of our uh, .NET PMs, Emo Landworth, created. It's a website that lets you search for an API. It tells you all of the platforms it's supported on. If it's not supported on some platforms, in some cases we have recommendations as to which APIs you should be using instead. Um, and if you have an existing binary which you would like to migrate to run on .NET Standard instead of .NET Framework, you can use the API Portability Analyzer which again I will I will click this link for just in case folks uh, just want to look uh, from this video to see where they need to go to find all these resources. Uh, it's in our Microsoft Docs. We've got an overview of the Portability Analyzer, which works either as a VS plugin or as a standalone command line tool. You give it some binaries or a, or a folder of binaries, and it will produce reports showing uh, which .NET profiles that the .NET Framework APIs used in those binaries are available on. So you can plan out your porting work that way. Next question. I've heard that some .NET Standard APIs will throw not supported exceptions on some platforms. Why? Uh, in general, this is rare. For, for an API to be included in .NET Standard means that we expect it to be present on all, dot, all platforms that support the .NET Standard. There are some exceptions. One exception I mentioned was on 4.6.1 and 4.6.2. There'll be a small set of APIs which aren't yet available there in .NET Standard 2.0, 1.6, and 1.5, but we still want those .NET Framework um, uh, applications to be able to use .NET Standard um, dependencies. Another case where this comes up is Every now and then we find a type that we believe should be in .NET Standard because it is very commonly used, but some of the APIs within that type don't make sense on all .NET Standard um, platforms. And this is a challenge because uh, the .NET team does not want to add partial types because there's no good way to split a type between assemblies and between packages. So every now and then you get into a case where we will add a type because some of its APIs are available everywhere, but some of its other APIs may throw. The, the classic example of this is app domain. In .NET Standard 2.0, the app domain type will be present because it's commonly used for inspecting the current app domain, and that will work on all .NET platforms. But some APIs, like appdomain.createDomain, are not supported on some platforms, such as .NET Core. And so, uh, in those cases, you, you would get a, a, a runtime exception. But um, we understand this is painful and uh, are trying to make the instances where something fails at runtime uh, as small as possible and are looking into options to make this uh, obvious at development time, possibly through Roslyn analyzers or VS IntelliSense or something like that, so that it's clear when you know maybe your .NET standard library is calling app domain .create domain um, would let you know that this might not work on .NET Core, for example. So um, conversations are ongoing uh, regarding that. Next question. Visual Studio 2015 and 2017 have very different tooling for .NET Standard. What should you use? So the, the, the deal here is that VS 2015 had preview tooling for .NET Core and .NET Standard, which used a different project system format. It used um, project.json and xproj files. Uh, to define a .NET Core or .NET Standard project. For Visual Studio 2017, we have uh, changed design, and in the RTM um, SDK, which is included in 2017, all of these projects are now CSProj-based, just like all other 
um, you know, C-sharp.net um, projects. This has some benefits. Uh, chief among them is that it's very easy now to reference from a .NET framework project to a .NET standard one, whereas with the project.json format, that was potentially more complicated if the .NET framework uh, project was using a csproj-based project file. Um, VS 2017 has the most up-to-date tooling. It's the best experience. So Visual Studio 2017 is the recommendation. Now, that's not to say that you can't use Visual Studio 2015 because that preview tooling still works. Uh, you're just going to have a couple of rough edges since it's preview tooling and it's not RTM'd. And future innovations and improvements are all going to be done in 2017. If you, um, so if you can, we recommend 2017. If your team's using 2015, that's okay. It'll still work. We recommend you use one or the other, but if you need to, you can um, actually have both types of project files in a directory so that you can work on the project from 2015 or 2017, and that works just fine. You can have a CS proj for 2017 and a project.json and an X proj for 2015. So different developers on your team can use whichever Visual Studio version they have installed. This works. It does add some overhead because project dependencies, project metadata, uh, NuGet packages, like references, these, these are all things that are stored in the project file. So there's going to be some hassle in keeping you know, pro dependencies and things like that in sync between the two project files, um, which is really the, the only downside of having both. The, the source itself, of course, would be shared, though, and um, you don't have to worry about um, you know, having two different source trees for, for different development tools. So we've talked a lot about .NET Standard 2.0 and some of the improvements that are coming in it. So when's it going to be available? Uh, preview in Q2 of 2017. Now, Q2 starts tomorrow, and it's not coming out tomorrow. So it's, you know, think mid-Q2. And then RTM in Q3. Um, again, I will link the, I will, I will add these links in um, notes for this video, or I'll make the slides available. But uh, if you want to read more, uh, Emo RPM, who did the APIs of .NET site, has a great YouTube series of um, videos on different .NET Standard topics. Uh, you can check out the official documentation for .NET Standard and .NET Standard 2.0. They have a lot of information. And because .NET Core is a related project, I included a link to that documentation as well. Hope this has been helpful. Thanks. <laughs>